everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rieger, another episode of The Daily Ticket. It's a Thursday, it's the 2nd of May, it's 2024, and we got ourselves a pretty good baseball team, it looks like. Tigers take another series. They win yesterday. They take a series from the Cardinals. Tigers have played in 10 series. They've won six of them. They've tied two of them. They've lost two of them. They're five games above 500 as you're watching or listening to this podcast. Is it sustainable? Are they good enough to make a run? They're on pace for like 92 wins. We're going to get into that tomorrow on the Daily Ticket unless something crazy happens. I have all kinds of stats that back up both sides, but is it sustainable? But today, I first have to say I was wrong about yesterday's podcast. Podcast was about Steven Stamkos. I don't feel wrong about that. However, when I was doing the podcast, if you watched or listened yesterday, you might have noticed that I made a comment on the Toronto Maple Leafs. At the time, they were up one nothing on the Bruins. I guaranteed Olive's college fund that the Bruins were going to come back and win. Now, they came back and tied it. But then they lost in overtime. And all those people in Maple Leaf Square were going crazy. I really hate the Maple Leafs. I really hate their fans more than anything else. I don't want them to be happy because they're so annoying. Every year is their year. They hog up all the oxygen in Canada, talking about the Leafs. And all the Leafs ever do is fall flat on their face. So I'm going to do it again. Later on tonight, I guarantee victory in Toronto for the Boston Bruins. It's going to be over. It's done. All those fans at Maple Leaf Square are going to be pissed because the Bruins are going to beat them. And I don't know if Austin Matthews is going to play. Like, it's ridiculous. That dude makes 53 million bucks and he's not playing with some mystery illness. Now, maybe I end up looking like a schmuck because I say he should play. And then after the season, it inevitably comes out that he's dealing with a heck of a lot more than just some random mysterious illness. But I'm going to double down on my Olive College Fund bet. I got the Bruins today in Toronto, and I got the Bruins big, at least by a goal and a half. That's my bet, in case you care. Let's move on. Talk about the Tigers tomorrow. Is it sustainable, the winning, and can they make the postseason? But yesterday, and you've already heard about this, because if you watch the videos on 97.1, the Ticket's YouTube page, I guarantee you every show had a similar video about the topic I'm about to talk about. But it's infuriating. It really is. And it doesn't even affect me. But I'm pissed off for the people that it does affect. So on Tuesday night at 11 o'clock, if you have Xfinity, if you have Comcast, you no longer have Bally's. That's right. The two sides apparently were trying to reach an agreement negotiations broke down and Comcast Xfinity said they're out. They're done. So if you happen to have Comcast or Infinity Xfinity, you can't watch the Tigers anymore. Bally's is gone. If you tried to tune in yesterday for the day game against the Cardinals, all you got was a blue screen saying, sorry, we can't show you the game. But apparently Comcast and Xfinity gave you 10 bucks back because you don't have that channel anymore. So that's exciting. But I got to believe, and I have no idea how many people are affected by this, it's a huge portion of the Tigers' viewing population. And finally, the Tigers are good. Like, I don't know if they're playoff good or not, but what I do know, for the first time in damn near a decade, we finally have a team worth watching that got off to a good start. They can really pitch, and maybe, just maybe, they can win the AL Central. You know as well as I do unless you're really young and don't remember about a decade ago, when you got yourself a good baseball team, it takes over the entire city. There's nothing like a pennant chase where you get to watch every day. It's like a soap opera. You can't get yourself away from it. You become obsessed. And for the people that have Xfinity or Comcast, they got to figure out a different option. And that is bullshit. It really is. Before we get into it, let me give you some statements, okay? Because the Tigers had a statement. They don't like what's going on. Quote, we are disappointed in the stalled negotiations between Bally Sports Detroit and Comcast 
and the inconvenience it may cause for Tiger fans. Fans who subscribe to other cable companies are unaffected. Those who are impacted can continue to watch Tiger games on the Bally Sports Plus app, DirecTV, Fubo, MLB TV. The Tigers have no voice in this matter, but are hopeful the two sides will come to an agreement as soon as possible. So that's from the Detroit Tigers. Now, I might come off sounding ignorant here, but I can tell you this. When Matt Ishbia bought the Phoenix Suns, his first order of business, when he bought the team after getting Kevin Durant and firing Monty Williams, apparently, one of his first orders of business was, hey, we're on public TV. To watch our games, you need an HD antenna. You don't need cable. You just need an antenna. Matt Ishbia wanted the games on in every household that wanted to watch Suns basketball. So you know what he did? He told every fan, if you need an antenna and it can't afford one or you just want one, contact us. We'll give you one for free. The Suns shipped out antennas to fans because Ishbia wanted his product being viewed throughout the desert. Pretty cool, right? Now, you see the Tigers. I have no idea what they can do and what they can't do. I tried to get to the bottom of it yesterday. Apparently, the baseball TV rights contract negotiation stuff is really weird, okay? What I do know is that the Red Wings, also owned by Chris Illich, and the Pistons, owned by Tom Gorris, towards the end of last season, put their games on Channel 20. Now, could the Tigers do something similar? I don't know. But what I'm led to believe is don't expect it. Because apparently the baseball TV deal is way different and way more complex than any other sports TV deal. So if you're looking for help from the Tigers, I just don't think you're going to get it. It would be nice, but I don't think it's going to happen. Here's the statement from Xfinity and Comcast. Quote, We've been very flexible with Diamond Sports Group for months as they work through their bankruptcy proceedings, providing them with an extension on the Bally Sports Regional Networks last fall and a unilateral right to extend the term for another year, which they opted to not exercise. We'd like to continue carrying their network, but they have declined multiple offers, and now we no longer have the rights to this programming. We will be proactively crediting our customers for the cost associated with them Most will automatically receive eight to ten dollars per month in credits. There you go. You can't watch the Tigers, but you get eight to ten dollars a month in a kickback. Oh, that's exciting. This is such bullshit. It really is. We as fans spend so much money to be fans. We go to games, ticket prices are expensive. We buy merch, merch is expensive. We buy concessions, we pay for parking, and it all goes to the owners of these baseball teams and sports teams in general. We do so much. Our emotions are wrapped up and tangled up in the teams. We can't not watch. So if you have Comcast or Xfinity, and all you want to do is watch the Tigers, maybe that's why you got that cable provider. Sorry, out of luck. So now you got to figure out what to do. You got a couple choices. I guess you could switch to another cable provider, but you chose that cable provider for a reason, did you not? Not to mention, it's kind of a pain in the ass to change to another cable provider. You might have to pay more. Not everybody can afford it. Or you can stream the Tigers. And what I do, and it's a total pain in the ass, is use the Bally's app. You can get an app from Bally's for $19.99 a month. And when you think about it, you say, oh, it's about a buck a game in the long run. Not a big deal, right? Okay, cool. The app sucks. The app blows. $20 for an app is already a lot of money. But then you add that to the fact that the app doesn't work properly. You can watch the Red Wings, the Pistons, or the Tigers on the app. I have YouTube TV. I have the Bally's app. I can't tell you how many times. The app has crapped out on me, and it usually happens when it's a big moment in the game. I was watching a Wings Rangers game about three weeks ago. Remember that game at Little Caesars that the Red Wings lost on a Friday night? You know what happened to me? I'll tell you what happened to me. The entire third period, I could not watch because the app didn't fucking work. Fast forward to 
about a week and a half ago. I'm watching the Tigers on the road. I love the addition of Jason Benetti. I think he's done a stellar job. Could not get into the app for the first four innings. All I saw was the circle of death, the wheel of death. It was thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and trying to work for me, but of course it did not. For some reason, I can always get the Bally's app to work on my phone. But does anybody really want to watch the phone? The screen's like this big. It's like 10 inches. I want to watch on my gorgeous 75, 80-inch TV. And also I heard that if you have an LG TV, the app doesn't work for them either. Because apparently you can't download the Bally's app. The app sucks. It does. It's the biggest waste of 20 bucks, but there's nowhere else you can go. And these TV disputes happen all the time. Back in the day, about, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could only watch Dodger games if you lived in the Los Angeles area. Los Angeles area, pretty big, right? But you had to live in the city. And that's a ritzy, rich area, I was told. So if you lived on the outskirts of the greater Los Angeles area, you for two, three years could not watch Dodger games. When the Avalanche won the cup, that entire year, regular season games were not on TV for some fans. Why? Because we got some dispute, just like this one between the cable provider and, of course, the station that carries the games. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. This stuff fires me up so much. Do you know when they cut the signal on Tuesday? 11 o'clock Central Time. It was game five of the Preds and Canucks on Bally's. So fans in Nashville watching the end of that game could not see the remaining period of hockey against the Vancouver Canucks. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You pay all this money for cable. We pay all this money to stream this and stream that and subscribe to this service and subscribe to that service. What the hell do we get out of it? And then you come up with a situation like this when you really have no other recourse. I get the Bally's app. I hate the app. I've already told you it's absolutely horrendous, but I get it because I have no other choice. I do like YouTube TV. You could go to other cable companies, but they're expensive. So I'm curious, does this affect you at all? Does this piss you off? What are you going to do? Are you going to get the app? Are you going to just go Tiger Liss? It's a good baseball team. At least I think they're a good baseball team. At least they're entertaining and exciting. I could not go without watching baseball. That's just me. Now, I guess you could watch some games on MLB TV when they provide it, but are those going to be blacked out locally? I don't know these answers. I guess you can join that FUBU TV and get a free sample, but that's only going to last you three to four days, and that's still streaming. There's a lot of people that don't even know how to stream. They don't want to stream. They just want to, and I don't blame them, hit their remote button, go to the channel that they've been going to for the last 20 years. I don't know who to blame in this. I don't know if it's Comcast, Xfinity. I don't know if it's Bally's. I don't really care. Just fix it. Just fucking fix it. I just find it so irritating that it's always us fans that get shit on. Oh, hey, but here's 8 to $10 back. You're going to be fine. You'll be forced to deal with this awful app. The funny thing, too, is this Bally's app, that you're going to have to get if you want to watch the Tigers unless you switch to another cable company. It's been so bad for so long, and they've done nothing about it. And I get it. Bally's, Sinclair, they're in bankruptcy. I don't care. Fix the damn app. $20 a month is a lot, and all you get is Red Wings, Pistons, both not playing right now, the Tigers, and you get the British Basketball Association or the British Basketball League. And the only way I know about the British Basketball League is because you see commercials for them when you have the app trying to watch the Tigers. They have, like, no sponsors. You get maybe, like, one commercial. Then they talk about the British Basketball League. And then 
there's a bunch of sound effects of people playing sports, ice skating, dribbling a basketball. Then they go back to the Tiger game. The app is a joke, but you might not have another choice. I am so curious. What are you doing? I'm so curious. Does this affect you? Do you have the guts, the self-control, the discipline to just say goodbye? I don't. Like, I was listening to our afternoon show driving in, Mike and Rico, and they were saying, like, what would you actually pay for? I'd pay for it all. I need to watch my sports. I love watching sports. It's what I do. I watch more sports than just regular TV shows. I watch more sports than really anything. Like, for instance, when I get home for work tonight and I'm doing this podcast at 538 on a Wednesday, I'll watch the playoff hockey. I'll watch the playoff basketball. I might try to catch a West Coast baseball game. That's what I do. So I can't go without sports. I've told my wife for years when we had our cable company, which eventually we cut the cord because we got a different TV and this just works out better financially for us. We got the YouTube and the Bally's. But I told my wife for years, sorry. I need these stations to watch sports. And she never got it, despite the fact that I do this for a living. She never got it. Or maybe she didn't care. I don't know. Either one. But we probably paid 50 to 60 more a month to make sure we had Bally's, to make sure we had the MLB network, to make sure we had the NBA network or the NFL network. I've always paid more. I like sports. so. Unfortunately, as much as I'm going to bitch, and man, does that Bally's app stink. I'm going to pay. What about you? And does this aggravate the shit out of you? Because it should. It's just another example of the little guy, us, taking the brunt of everything. My a bunch of billionaires haggle over all kinds of money. So let me know what you think. Let's get to some quick comments. And then... uh we're so close to the weekend, people. Yesterday's podcast was about Steven Stamkos. I said the Red Wings should bring him here if he becomes an unrestricted free agent and does not return to Tampa Bay. Some of the comments. And believe it or not, a lot of people did not like this. At Tyler-ML6IP. Sorry you lost all that money last night because the Leafs won. Yep. Double or nothing tonight. We got the Bruins. Say it with me. Minus a goal and a half. Probably 250 on the money line. Let's get rich. Here's another one. At Caleb-DX7YD. Why would the Wings want him? If he goes to the free agency market, he will want more than he's worth. Maybe. Talking about Stamkos. And then we got a lot of people that do not want him because they don't think he plays enough center anymore. At Brad McGuire. 96-11. Stammer is more a specialized winger, not a center. Unless he wants to give the wings a major discount, maybe. But then you're getting older in a place of going with prospects for a guy like a ghost. I say no thanks. But media pundits are probably salivating at the possibility of someone who may add something they don't need. More goals in place of defense. Wings have done this in the past. Wendell Clark, Pat Verbeek, etc. And it never works out. I don't mind that way of thinking. I don't. I just look at a guy like Stamkos and the goals that he provides, the leadership that he provides, I'd be all for it. But the people that point out that he's more of a winger now instead of a center, I would buy that. Absolutely. How about this one? At Jake Kiefer, 4276. It's important to note, half of all his points and goals scored by Stamkos were on the power play this year. It's a very scary stat line if your goal is for Stammer to be a play-driving winger. Fair. And then, how about one more for you? At Talix001. Although the Wings need a 2C, second center, I'm not sure Stamkos is the right fit. I think he would be a better fit as a winger with Larkin and given that how well Kane fit in. I think Kane fits the team better. Oh, by the way, somebody at... First try, drum guy, 6856 says, nice job, Riggs. Love the show, bud. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Always got to end things on a positive note. So there you go. There's some of the comments about Steven Stamkos. If you want them or you don't want them, let me know why. But more than anything, let me know how this Bally's Sinclair Xfinity Comcast thing affects you. How does it affect you? 
should make you aggravated is what it should do. So one more thing you got to deal with, one more thing you have to change. And by the way, more than likely, you're going to end up spending more money than you already were. So at the end of the day, you get screwed. Get sick of it after a while, don't you? All right, we'll catch you on a Friday tomorrow on The Daily Ticket. Have a great day, everybody. See ya. 